All right, so we are recording, and we're going to start this show. This is an official, um, serious business professional recording. Um, we expect nothing less. Um, and so let's get ready to do this in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. It's me. It's Stevie Stroh. You may know me as the host of the David Ladd Show that we do every week. And um, we have with us Sir David Ladd himself. Thank you for being here, David. Hello, Stevie. <laughs> of course, the show we're talking about is Coco Talk, the nation's leading live talk show featuring David Ladd and the Tandy Color Computer. And David and I are here to do an update on how to update the Coco SDC. So we're going to update the SDC firmware, we're going to update the SDC DOS, and then finally we're going to update the Coco SDC Explorer. And there will be links to all of these things in the description of this video. In order to save time, I have downloaded everything and copied everything to my SD card. But for the sake of telling you what Willis is talking about, I'm going to switch over here for just a second and show you the main two websites you want to go to. So the first website you want to go to is colorcomputerarchive.com. And from there, you can search for SDC. And at the time of this recording, the latest version of the Coco SDC Explorer is version 0.45. And then here's the funny part about this. You're going to download this to a zip file. You're going to extract the zip file. You're going to find the disk image that you need to copy to your Coco SDC card, which needs to go in the root directory of your Coco SDC card. The funny part is, is that the zip file and the original disk image are called SDCX. However, they need to be renamed to sdcexp.disk. And I'll repeat that one more time, and I'll type it here in all caps. So it's sdc, Sierra Delta Charlie, Echo, X-Ray, whatever the hell P stands for in military talk, right? So it's sdcexp.dsk is the name of that file. Um, you also have to create a file called startup.cfg to tell it what disk to, to auto mount in each drive. And so we're mounting the SDC EXP disk in our drive zero, which is our first floppy drive. And for my convenience, I've also mounted in slot one or drive one, the setup.dsk, which is the file that I've extracted by going to the Coco SDC site, which is cocosdc.blogspot.com. This is Darren Atkins site who created the original Coco SDC. You would click on latest firmware you will download a zip file, you will extract that zip file, and you will drag the setup.dsk file to your flash drive. And then what you should end up seeing in the root directory of your flash drive, just one more time, although I think I just closed my file browser window, but yeah, this is my SD card. So in the root of my SD card, I've got startup CFG. This is how we mount our disks. And the SDC EXP disk is the one that will launch the latest version of the Coco SDC Explorer. Have I missed anything, David? So far, so good. All right. So now we are going to go over to my Coco 3. Now what I need to do is I need to take the um, SD card out of my PC card reader. I'm going to um, turn off my Coco SDC for just a second. Nothing up my sleeve here. And I'm going to stick the SDC card back in the slot and I'm going to fire it up. Now if I did my job properly, the Coco SDC Explorer should already boot because I copied the file to the root of the drive and it's booted up right now. So right now we can see that I'm already running the latest version of Coco SDC Explorer. So you might just have to switch to drive one and uh, do so a dir. So go to drive one yep. and I've mounted it there. We'll do a dir and here we go. So we're going to run setup Oh, I, it's, this is not a real DOS, so I can't just type that in there. I actually have to type in run quote setup. Run setup. Yep. And then here we go. So do you want to display our installed firmware? Why the hell not? Let's hit V yep. to display. So my current um, MCU, what is MCU? The firmware? Microcontroller unit. Okay. So my current microcontroller unit is 117, and my current DOS version is 1.4. When I press any key... Now it's saying it's going from 117 to 120 and from 1.4 to 1.6, right? Yep. So we'll hit F to upgrade yep. our microcontroller unit, and that's basically the internal firmware, right? Yep. So we're going to do that now. Press Y to proceed with the installation. Press any other key to cancel. And this is basically like flashing a BIOS chip on a traditional PC. 
We're and just as dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> we can smoke our um, we can smoke our system if we do it wrong. Oh yeah, if you accidentally shut off the power, you lose power. Yep, you're pretty much hosed. <laughs> okay. And so now we have rebooted there. All right, so we're gonna escape out. We're gonna type in drive um, drive one. I'll type in dir. Here's my file. I'll type in run quote setup. Here's my setup. And so now, if I want to do a V to verify now, I should see that now my current microkernel version is 120. And so now I'm going to update my SDC DOS. So I'll hit D for DOS. Yep. And then it should ask me which bank I want to do to, right? And I'm going to stay with bank yep. zero. Right? Yep. So I'm going to stay in that bank. It will require reboot. Press Y to proceed. Writing ROM image to flash. I mean, you can't get no easier than this, right? Uh, Darren okay. made it easy. <laughs> All right. So at this point now, if I hit break to exit and I go back to um, drive one and I run setup and I hit verify, I should see that I'm on M120 and 1.6. Okay. Now just for grins and giggles, I'm going to power off. I'm going to eject the SD card and let it just boot to Coco. SDC DOS, so we can verify that as well. Here we see SDC DOS 1.6, and it recognizes that we're on a Coco 3. So mission accomplished there, right? I've basically upgraded the firmware and the DOS, and I went ahead and copied in the latest, greatest version of the Coco SDC Explorer. So let's take a look at that again real quick. And now that I've plugged the SDC card, it's doing the uh, that setup.config or startup.cfg says what to mount in drive zero. It mounted the SDC exp.disk, which is the disk that Coco SDC Explorer is on. That now auto boots. And this is how we make an auto boot disk. And so here we go. Now here's what I want to see, just out of curiosity. When I go down to games.c2, which is my library of color computer to games, do you remember what the page up and page down keys are? No, I don't. But you can always hit Shift H to get the help. There we go. So I'm doing Shift down arrow. What I was finding before on an older version of this is that I couldn't get past the letter P. So right now I'm at N N O P Q R. Okay, yeah. So I had a problem on an older version of the SDC Explorer. I was in uh, Central Florida. I was trying to show off some games. I couldn't get past the letter P in uh, exploring through the uh, directories. I can now do that. So Shift up and Shift Shift up arrow is page up and page down. Right, and then if I want to just find a game here, for example, I don't even okay. So, this is Dancing Devil. I would do that, I would hit Dancing Devil 1 disk. I go over here, hit Dancing Devil bin, and it should automatically load and execute that binary for me. Right, so that's how the SDC Explorer works. It gives you a nice GUI. Uh, of course, I didn't set the RGB palette for this, so the colors look a little pukey. Uh, so, there's your Dancing Devil. Um, and cool. And that's really it. So we upgraded the firmware. We upgraded the DOS. We upgraded to the latest version of the Coco SDC Explorer. Now help me remember one more thing, David, because this is something mm -hmm. I didn't remember how to do. But let's say I accidentally exited out of the Coco SDC Explorer, and now I'm back at my basic prompt. What's the command to type in now to get back to SDC Explorer? EXP. EXP. Ease of use. And if I type in that, that's built into Coco DOS, where it'll now, boom, just reboot that for us. And so in order for this to work, though, the disk name has to be named that SDC exp disk, right? So the, the, yes. the, disk, the disk image name needs to match that. And that's a built-in command that uh, Darren Atkins has added to uh, Coco SDC DOS to relaunch Coco SDC Explorer from the quote-unquote command prompt, which is basically basic, right? Um, cool. Have we missed anything? Um, well, I would like to also state that if for some reason someone doesn't want SDC Explorer to auto start, um, so if they just leave their um, startup.cfg blank, mm -hmm. um, but as long as they have this SDC exp.dsk image on the SD card, they can just type exp and launch the ah. SDC Explorer without having to actually edit the startup.cfg. So then what would happen then is it would boot straight to my basic prompt. It would just say OK instead of auto-booting to the GUI menu. But if I was just at any time to type in EXP like I am right now, 
Oh, so I can't do that on my PC keyboard. I gotta do it on the Coco keyboard. Type in EXP, bada bing, bada boom, there it is. And that's cool, yep. right? Is that cool? Yep. Okay. Yes, it is. So that's a great extra tip. So let me show you guys one more thing. I want to show you something cool I just got in the mail today. Tony Jimenez from our Facebook group sent me this cool thing. It's a 3D printed case. Here on the front it says SD pack. On the top it says Tandy. When I open this thing up, what do I see here? A whole bunch of SD cards. And what Tony came up with is a really cool thing. And this one has got Demon Attack on it, I think. So he took the cartridge labels and printed them on SD cards and he created an SD pack that's similar to a ROM pack. So what does that mean? What, what does this mean to us? How does this benefit humanity? Well, I'm going to take this little SD card here. I'm going to, as David likes me to say, I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to stick it in my Coco SDC. And when I turn on my Coco SDC, in a matter of seconds now, SD pack, virtual ROM pack loader. Um, Antonio Jimenez. And then boom, there's Demon Attack, right? So with this whole concept now of the... Um, of these um, little SD cards, you can now recreate the experience of a ROM pack on an SD card because all you need is that startup.cfg. Startup.cfg, right? So you have a startup.cfg file on the SD card to tell it what disk to auto mount. It'll then auto mount a disk image. On that disk image, you have a basic file that you name autoexec.bas, B-A-S. And in that autoexec.bas file, it you write a little mini basic program telling it what binary file to load, what disk image to load and execute. And so this is a way to make a self-booting, self-executing floppy drive off of an SD card, which is the next best thing to making your own auto boot ROM cartridges, right? It's a really cool project. And so he's gone through and, and, and he's got a website, which is really cool too. I'm going to show you that real quick. So his website, if you just go to sdpack.com, He's going to explain to you how this project works, and he's going to explain to you what he did and all the all the trouble he went through to figure this stuff out. So, he's talking about the history of how we used to load games or how what are our choices to load software on the Coco. Well, one option was a cassette, which takes a long time. One option is a ROM pack, which is instant loading, and then there was a floppy drive, which is a nice compromise. However, floppy drives cost a lot of money, and not everybody can afford a floppy now. So, what do we have? Enter the Coco SDC, which is a uh, way to boot floppy disks off an SD card. So he decided to marry these two concepts and he's taking the um, ROM pack and he created a little template where you can print these labels on a generic thing you can put on an SD card. He even tells you where to get SD cards for 99 cents off of eBay. 16 megabytes is more than you need because what's a floppy, like 164K or something like that, David? What is yeah, it? roughly. <laughs> and then there's a special command you have to use to format it as the FAT file system with one megabyte um, cluster size. But he'll show you how to do that. And then it, so it's a whole tutorial here. It's even got some videos on how to make this work, right? And so it's a really cool project where we can basically now um, have an auto booting cartridge. Now this is a game that was designed for artifacting since I'm going through RGB. Um, it looks kind of, um, you know, stripey. But let me find one more game that I'm gonna stick in here just for grins and giggles here. Turn it on. So SDC, look at the SDC packs. That's kind of a cool little loader he came up with, right? Cirrus, Copyright Intelligent Software Dragon Data Limited. Okay, so it's a chess game. All right. So again, my colors are a little bit off. You might want to modify your auto exec bass file to in include the palette RGB command if you're running on a Coco 3 with an RGB monitor just to set the um, color palette mode. But you can see here it loaded pretty quickly. Not exactly as quick as a real ROM pack would, but it's a matter of seconds. You could probably count those seconds on one hand. And it's cool. What do you think about that, David? That's definitely cool. There you go. It has the David Ladd seal of approval. <laughs> and you, you can't ask for any more than that. So, Tony, good job. David Ladd approves. David's a big celebrity. And last <laughs> but not least, we'll fire this up again. And this is what the Coco SDC DOS looks like with the latest version of SDC Explorer. This is heaven on earth, folks. Have we beat this one to death, David? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to talk about ESP TTL chips before we go? No, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful, beneficial, useful. I hope it's changed your life. I hope it's improved your life. And I hope you run out and get yourself a Coco 3 or a Coco 2 or a Coco 1.5. We don't care. And we hope to see you next weekend 
at Cocoa Fest. That's your cue to say goodbye, David. Okay. Later, everyone. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we spent a long time working this out here. <laughs> bye bye now. Later. <laughs>